Well, good evening, good afternoon, uh, good morning, and uh, welcome uh, to all uh, to our High Impact Practices webinar uh, on social marketing, using marketing principles and techniques to improve contraceptive access, uh, choice, uh, and use. And this is presented by the uh, High Impact Practices team in partnership with the, uh, the IBP uh, network. Now, we're uh, very excited uh, to talk uh, to our presenters in just uh, a few moments' time. I can tell you that they're joining us from a hot and humid Chennai, from rather chilly uh, Kathmandu, uh, from, uh, from a rather uh, cold morning here um, in, uh, in Washington, uh, D.C. But we really hope that you're all staying safe and well. We wish you a happy New Year. I hope that's not too late on January uh, the uh, the twentieth to be wishing you a happy New Year. We wish you a happy New Year, and we're very glad that you can join us for this high impact practices webinar this morning, uh, this afternoon, this evening. I'm Martin Smith, and I am the managing director uh, at uh, FP2030. I'm very privileged uh, to be uh, your moderator um, here today, and we'll move on again. Uh, to the next slide, please. And so we've got a really great and diverse array of speakers uh, on social marketing and with specific reference to uh, the uh, newly updated high impact practice with us today. Um, we'll be hearing from our colleague uh, Clancy Broxton, the team lead of the uh, private sector health at USAID, to really set the stage um, for social marketing as a high impact practice in just one moment. Then we're very excited uh, that we'll be hearing from uh, Ram Ganesan, uh, who is the Senior Private Health Sector Advisor at APT Associates, who will take us through the detail of the high impact practice and overview of that brief uh, and the great information, implementation tips and all else uh, that it contains. And we're particularly lucky, I think, uh, to move to a, a very um, important country perspective uh, from Nepal in hearing from uh, Jibbal Pokhral, who is the managing director of the uh, Nepal uh, CRS uh, company with, uh, with decades of experience in social marketing and its key contribution that it can make towards a country's family planning goals. Uh, we'll then move to some Q&A. Uh, I'll attempt to moderate that and get us through uh, to the top of the hour uh, in just about um, 56, 57 minutes time uh, to close, uh, close at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time and wherever else you are in the world. So I hope that works for everybody. And so uh, I'll just run through a few details on the next slide. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. As you know, you can submit your questions Anytime you'll be able to see on the right hand navigation where you can submit questions. I'll be looking at those closely as we go through the session, uh, and I'll be directing those in our QA session to the relevant uh, person or, or people. Uh, please do make a note to visit the High Impact Practices uh, website at your leisure um, after this meeting. Um, and the presentation itself um, in, uh, uh, in PDF form as well as other handouts, including the brief itself, uh, can be found in the handouts tab, again, in that right-hand navigation. And we'll shift on again to the next slide. So what are the HIPs? What are the high impact practices? Well, in short, they're evidence-based family planning practices. They've been vetted by experts against specific criteria. There is a high impact practices technical advisory group that scrutinizes these HIPs in great detail before they can move through to be fully published. And they're set out in a documented uh, a document and an easy to use uh, format. Um, there's a whole set of references where you can see where all the evidence is coming from. Uh, there's the definition of the practice itself. There are tips for implementation from all over the world. There's a great deal to get into uh, in that HIPS document. We look forward to that, uh, that session with, uh, with Ram in, uh, in just a few minutes time on the HIP itself. And we'll move on again. So just to remind us all of the, the categories of high impact practices. So these three primary categories um, that capture very important and distinct aspects of, uh, of, of, of practices within family planning, the enabling environment, a set of, 
of briefs that deal with the, uh, the systemic barriers that need to be addressed um, that may affect an individual's ability to access family planning information and services. Then that service delivery uh, to improve the availability, accessibility, acceptability and quality of family planning services and our social marketing high impact practice that we're speaking about today is within this service delivery category. We have a, a third category of social and behavior change. This is a burgeoning, relatively new category set up over the last uh, three or four years in terms of the knowledge behaviors uh, and so forth that are associated uh, with family planning uptake. And then uh, we have a number of enhancements, HIP enhancements that are used in conjunction with those briefs, with those HIPs to maximize the impact uh, of HIP implementation. And those, uh, those enhancements, uh, particularly uh, interesting, uh, uh, one around adolescent service that obviously then works in conjunction uh, with several of the other HIPs and is an interesting and important in the context of, uh, of our social marketing high impact practice, for sure. We'll move on to the next slide again. Um, and uh, this sets out the full array of the high impact practices. There are currently uh, eight service delivery uh, briefs, uh, six covering the enabling environment, uh, three covering social and behavior change communication. Uh, we have uh, hip enhancements that I think number four at this stage and a very important set of strategic planning guides, I think five at the last count, that really lay out uh, how to go about um, implementing a particular approach for maximum impact. There are also uh, papers within the HIP site that relate to equity within family planning, an evidence summary, for example, that looks at, uh, at um, uh, economic uh, empowerment. And we'll move on again. And so um, let's, uh, let's turn to our, uh, our brief for today, our mission for today. And so social marketing, and I'll, I'll just go back to the previous slide, if that's okay, uh, Ados, if possible. Um, so um, social marketing brief, using marketing principles and techniques to improve contraceptive access, choice and use. And so the original social marketing brief uh, was um, written in 2013. And, and was obviously due for an update, and we're very, very grateful that, a, that an excellent team of authors came together. Uh, the large part of the work was done during 2021 to uh, really not just update this brief, but fundamentally rework it to the, uh, to the new reality and the great innovation that's happened in social marketing over the last several years. And so it's great to have Ram on the call. Uh, he's one of the authors. I know at least one of our other authors, uh, Roslyn Nachola, uh, the technical team lead from UNFPA Uganda is a participant on the call and, and she'll be with us, I'm sure, for, for some involvement in, the, in our Q&A session, perhaps. I just want to mention the other authors. Important to mention Norbert uh, Deanda and uh, Rachel Matuku from Population Services International, Laura Homeke, Sean Malache and Elaine Minotti from USAID, Gail O'Sullivan uh, from Georgetown University, uh, Tanvi Pandit Rajani from JSI, Christina Wakefield from the Manoff Group and Jane Wickstrom from BMGF, all of whom uh, were authors on the brief and there were a very large number of reviewers, including uh, our colleague uh, Clancy Broxton, who's on the call with us today. So uh, with all of those due thanks to that great work, we'll move on to the next slide. And these are our panelists, as I say, uh, Clancy Broxton from USAID, Ram Ganesan from Apt Associates and Jibdal Pokhrel from the uh, Nepal CRS uh, company. We're really excited uh, to hear from each of you um, in turn. And so um, we'll have probably about uh, 12 to 15 minutes for each of our presenters to go through their, uh, um, their presentations and then we'll have Q&A uh, at the end of that. And so we'll move on again. And it's great to be able to uh, introduce, uh, introduce you all to, uh, to Clancy Broxton, uh, private sector team lead, as I say, um, with the Office of Population Reproductive Health at USAID. Uh, Clancy has deep experience in this field, a really exciting presentation uh, in terms of the history of social marketing, in terms of its, of its really critical um, application to the challenges that we have uh, in front of us as far as uh, family planning is concerned. Clancy's working on a number of those really key investments of USAID uh, in the private sector. USAID has always been at the forefront of, uh, of social marketing, uh, social marketing in health and in family planning. 
uh, for many, many decades now. So Clancy, uh, great to hand over to you to set the stage and uh, please do go ahead uh, with your presentation. Over to you, Clancy. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everyone. So to set the scene for the webinar today, I'm going to speak with you about social marketing's context and background. Next slide. <clears throat> social marketing has been defined by Kotler and Lee as a process that applies marketing principles and techniques to create, communicate, and deliver value in order to influence the targeted audience's behaviors for the benefit of the target audience and society. And so the main difference uh, between commercial and social mar uh, marketing is that the latter aims to achieve a social goal, behavior change rather than pros profits. Social marketing is based on the marketing mix or the four Ps, and I think we'll be hearing about that later as well, but the four Ps states that to maximize sales, the marketing mix helps make the right product available in the right place at the right price. In this case, um, the four Ps <clears throat> refer to product, meaning a family planning good or service offered to a specific market segment or priority group. Price refers to clients' willingness or ability to pay, considering financial and opportunity costs and competition with other similar products. Promotion is the communication or advertising about the product or service that's targeted to a specific market segment or priority group. And place means the availability and distribution channels to reach the target market segment and that are linked to promotional channels. Next slide. So the history of social marketing is traced back to uh, 1951 when GDY first raised the question as to why you can't sell brotherhood and rational thinking like you can sell soap. Wybe examined four social campaigns and concluded that social campaigns that assumed a market-like approach were more effective than those that did not take a market-like or product sales approach. So campaigns that were purely social in nature without a market-like approach were, were considered less effective by, by Vibe. <clears throat> then during the 1960s internationally, the WHO and the World Bank started to experiment with using marketing efforts to achieve social goals. And that's a picture there of an early social marketing program from the World Bank. Next slide. Social marketing began as a formal discipline in 1971 when marketing experts Philip Kotler and Gerald Zaltman published Social Marketing, an approach to planned social change in the Journal of Marketing. In this important publication, called Coulter and Zaltman define social marketing as the application of principles and tools of marketing to achieve socially desirable goals. Next slide. In 1985, Richard Manoff published a seminal book called Social Marketing, A New Imperative for Public Health. This book provided a thorough overview of social marketing and illustrated the practice with case studies. Building upon that work, next slide. In 1988, social marketing was introduced to the public health community during a WHO symposium. That symposium was later followed by a WHO brief by Marie Birkinshaw that details the four Ps and talks about uh, social marketing as a practice. That was entitled Social Marketing for Health. And it was used broadly to build social marketing programs around the world. In 1994, the Social Marketing Quarterly Academic Journal was launched. Next slide. International aid donors began funding large-scale social marketing in the efforts in the large-scale social marketing efforts beginning in the in 1980s and 1990s. In particular, USAID funded the SOMARC project, which stands for Social Marketing for Change. DFID started funding social marketing in 1991, which developed into at least 30 different funded social marketing programs by 2008. In 2008, the first World Social Marketing Conference took place in England, and that was followed by World Social Marketing Conferences and continent-specific social marketing conferences at regular intervals since that time. Next slide. As noted in the last slide, 
USAID and other donors have supported social marketing for decades. During that time, social marketing has extended the availability and use of family planning into communities by utilizing both traditional and non-traditional private sector outlets, such as pharmacies, shops, beauty parlors, and community health workers. Generally speaking, through social marketing, we are looking to pair a desirable behavior with a product and to focus on the market segments that can pay something for family planning, but that still require a subsidy. In some cases, the subsidy is directed at demand side campaigns and marketing, but the product has no subsidy and is distributed either by a social marketing organization or through regular commercial distribution. In other cases, both the product and related services and the demand side promotions are subsidized. Many USAID missions support local social marketing organizations, which is a great strategy for ensuring family planning provision into the future. It takes time to build these social marketing organizations, not only their technical capability, but their organizational sustainability. In countries where we've done this successfully, particularly in Latin America, the Middle East, and in some cases in Asia, USAID has provided long-term support. In many cases, social marketing relies on a network of linked outlets, and it's often associated with drug shops and pharmacies programming for family planning. In general, it's important to position social marketing products so that they occupy a specific market segment, appeal to a specific priority population, and generally do not compete with either commercial or free products. Next slide. This slide shows the S-curve, which has been used to analyze family planning market growth and changes in family planning utilization over time. On the left-hand side of the slide, there are countries that have a low MCPR prevalence and slow growth in family planning usage. These countries have an MCPR less than 15. At stage two of the S-curve, there is a period where rapid growth can occur, where there is some demand that has been built. In this stage, the MCPR ranges from 15 to 54% as MCPR increases rapidly. At stage three of the S-curve, there is a high MCPR and growth in family planning use is leveling off. Next slide. This slide shows how the S-curve relates to social marketing programming and how social marketing can play a role at different points in the S-curve. In stage one of the S-curve, there is a focus on building demand. In this stage, social marketing is a key driver of increasing contraceptive use by tapping into latent demand. Demand creation is generally effective at this stage, as is expanding availability and access to self-administered methods through increased numbers of family planning service delivery points. During stage two of the S-curve, there is a focus on consolidating demand and expanding supply and financing. During this time, there are continued demand creation investments. There's also a focus on increasing access points, either public or private. Investments are often made in social franchising and engagement of private providers, including incorporating free or subsidized commodities, as well as investments in expanding public provision. And during this stage, the importance of social marketing declines over time slightly as supply begins to meet demand. During stage three of the S-curve, there's a focus on affordability and sustainability. There are often efforts to strengthen systems by supporting private sector delivery of family planning, such as through financing and accreditation. There are also often fewer social marketing programs in this stage. Some social marketing programs may have graduated from donor support and are operating on a business basis. Others may be receiving government subsidies to continue subsidized distribution and promotions. Next slide. So this slide discusses settings where social marketing has proved particularly useful. For example, in fragile settings. Uh, in fragile settings as varied as Afghanistan, Haiti, and Cambodia, social marketing has proved to be a useful way to reach people who don't have access to a formal public health system. Social marketing products, particularly short acting methods, can be delivered through drug shops, pharmacies, and even convenience stores so that women can access family planning even while being unable to access formal health care through clinics and hospitals. Where public health systems have not expanded to rural areas or areas in conflict, private socially marketed outlets can deliver family planning at a reasonable cost to women. 
Another is example, another example is countries where there's very limit, little demand for family, family planning. In these cases, there's often a need to integrate intensive demand creation efforts with supply side efforts. Social marketing is able to do so by promoting branded products that not only create demand, but that also indicate where a user might find access to supply. By integrating branded social and behavior change interventions with the supply side delivery of branded products and services, social marketing brings together supply and demand in the user's mind and helps them to easily locate products and services. In countries where there is an existing fast moving consumer goods supply chain infrastructure, social marketing can work with existing wholesalers and distributors to distribute such short acting methods quickly and efficiently. This allows social marketing to quickly fill gaps in supply while the public health sector and the social marketing platform build longer term capacity and the ability to deliver more long acting methods. In many countries, social marketing platforms have leveraged the social marketing of products across a basket of health goods to include multiple health areas, not just family planning. Socially marketed products in other health areas include mosquito nets, oral rehydration solution, clean water kits, vitamins and iodized salt, among others. This allows the cost of socially marketed products to go down as the infrastructure that is created for social marketing distribution and promotion is used to achieve the aims of multiple health areas. Finally, <clears throat> because many social marketing organizations have experience introducing new products into their social marketing platform, social marketing is a useful practice for introducing new family planning products into the method mix. For example, several years ago in Madagascar, Nigeria, and Zambia, PSI carried out a pilot study to introduce the hormonal intrauterine device and to measure user satisfaction and continuation rates. Finally, I'd like to give an example of a country, Cambodia, where the social marketing program has incorporated these different aspects on this slide. Beginning in the late 1990s, the government worked to rebuild and capacitize public health services that had been living in during many years of conflict. Social marketing was one tool employed by the government and international donors to develop health services. As an <clears throat> international social marketing organization, PSI began to work in Cambodia and develop number one condoms to address HIV in the country. Over time, PSI Cambodia added to this product portfolio, including several planning, family planning commodities such as oral contraceptives and injectable contraceptives. As PSI Cambodia expanded its service delivery platform, the Sun Quality Health Network, it added long-acting contraceptives to the product mix. The social marketing and social franchising platforms complement the development of government public health services that also expanded family planning access. Over time, the family planning services in Cambodia matured and the country moved up the S-curve. Between 2000 and 2014, the MCPR among married women in Cambodia increased from 18.8% to 38.8%. Throughout this period, Cambodia used the marketing mix or four Ps to guide its programming and its social marketing platform. The, the product was developed by understanding the method mix and which methods could have the greatest impact within the program. Product packaging was added to make contraceptives more attractive. Price was considered in making products both affordable and attractive to users. Place was evaluated in terms of which types of outlets and service delivery platforms would carry which family planning methods. Outlet availability within specific geographic areas was analyzed and expanded. Promotion was considered in the development of SBC campaigns to increase family planning uptake among women who desired to limit or space their fertility. By combining the four Ps, social marketing in Cambodia was able to increase contraceptive access and availability, as well as demand for contraception. Next slide. On this last slide, I'll just note that there are a number of myths and, mis and misconceptions that people have heard about regarding social marketing. One is that social marketing products are always set subsidized. In fact, there are independent social marketing organizations that operate without subsidies. <clears throat> In general, so social marketing products are more likely to be subsidized when there's a product pricing that, uh, that 
is relatively low and that needs to reach a large number of people quickly. Another myth is that social marketing is primarily a supply-based intervention. In fact, many social marketing campaigns have been purely social and behavior change campaigns focused on demand creation. A third myth is that because social marketing requires subsidized commodities, the practice is not sustainable. While well, subsidized commodities might be used to seed the market, the practice can become sustainable over time, even when commodities are initially subsidized. A fourth misconception that is heard frequently is that only social marketing NGOs or SMOs can carry out social marketing programs. In fact, social marketing is a practice that can be carried out by a variety of organizations if they have the right tools and know how to apply the four P's of social marketing. Finally, it's a common myth that USAID or another donor, such as UNFPA, must always finance subsidized commodities or product procurement in order to implement mar social marketing. In practice, many SMOs have developed sustainable product procurement processes that do not always require subsidized commodities. Next slide. And these are some references, and I'll just say thank you and pass it back to Martin. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks so much, uh, Clancy, uh, really setting the stage uh, superbly there. Um, great applicability of social marketing in a wide array of settings was one key takeaway. Um, uh, your, your demonstration of the S-curve, uh, whether we're talking about relatively lower levels of MCPR or those uh, countries that are at mature stage, social marketing has a key role to play. And then that, uh, I think that great um, uh, sort of um, a continuum you took us through from countries that are in a fragile setting, the, the role of social marketing in those settings, all the way through to countries that have a very well-developed um, FMCG sector and points in between. So um, great to have that uh, stage set, uh, Clancy, and really uh, looking forward to you being with us for those questions. And do start putting them down, um, uh, colleagues, uh, uh, on the right-hand side of your screen. I'll be looking at those as now we turn uh, next to uh, introduce uh, Ram Ganesan. Uh, Ram uh, is a senior private health sector advisor um, with, uh, with Shops Plus, uh, led by Apt Associates, as well as the Asia uh, a regional manager. Significant experience, uh, a deep experience uh, in this work. Uh, no one better really to take us through uh, the, uh, the, the high impact practice uh, brief for social marketing in detail, and and even more so, Ram, because uh, you're one of the uh, one of the authors of the revised brief, and we do sincerely thank you for that work. Ram's joining us today uh, from uh, from Chennai, in India, and so Ram, uh, really looking forward to the next 10, 12 minutes uh, to go through the brief in some detail, and uh, and then looking forward to the Q and A after that. So over to you, Ram. Uh Thanks, Martin. Thank you. And uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, and and of course, thank you, Clancy, for that wonderful introduction to social marketing and and a recap of uh, the long history that social marketing has. Uh, like Martin mentioned, this this uh, brief is. Uh, collective work of many people from various organizations. Uh, and they contributed through writing, through sharing evidence and examples, uh, in reviewing and editing uh, in a number of different ways. Uh, so I'm really honored to present on their behalf, uh, but I encourage you to just look at the acknowledgement section of the brief, uh, where you'll see more details of all the authors and the contributors and the reviewers. Uh, so with that, uh, jumping right in, what do we mean when uh, by social marketing in the context of high impact practices for so, uh, family planning? So it's the use of marketing principles and techniques. Uh, and I'll emphasize that use of marketing principles and techniques to shape the provision of contraceptive services and products with the aim of improving access, choice, and use for target populations. Uh, and I'll explain those marketing principles and techniques a little bit more uh, in the next slides before taking on other parts of the segment uh, later on, sentence later on. Next slide, please. Uh, Clancy mentioned this, the four Ps. Uh, uh, they're, they're part of the, the core marketing principle uh, 
uh, of, uh, for peace and uh, you know that's the uh, the product price promotion in place and what we've seen is uh, that increasingly policy uh, is, is recognized as one of the elements of uh, 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 one of the P's or one of the elements of social marketing. So I've just added that as four P's plus policy. Uh, I'm really not going to go through the definitions. I think uh, Clancy's explained that, uh, what each of these four P's means. Uh, I'll just perhaps give an example. The product uh, in, in the context of family planning could be, for example, a pill uh, or services for implant uh, insertion. Uh, the, the price really is, uh, is the cost uh, uh, that's incurred by the target population uh, or the, the consumer to access the product or service. And, and it's a combination of both, let's say, the, the, the actual price of the product or service that's paid uh, and also the opportunity costs, such as uh, you know the cost of transportation or time, and and obviously in social marketing, one of our goals is to is to make sure that the price is uh, set such that it's affordable to the people. Uh, promotion, uh, uh, you know, it, it could be uh, it could be branded, it could be generic, it it could promote the brand, it could promote the uh, uh, let's say a brand of condoms such as uh, uh, desired condoms. Uh, it could promote the category, uh, let's say oral pills and not a specific brand. It, it could promote the behavior, uh, which is uh, you know delaying uh, or avoiding the next pregnancy, whatever. So the promotion covers all of these aspects and it's specifically targeted to a target population. Uh, it could be advertising, it could be, um, direct face-to-face -face contact uh, uh, or, or other forms of communication. Uh, channels, I think we've talked about it uh, uh, to some extent already. There are, there are a number of, uh, it, it refers to the place where uh, the target population can really access the product or service. So for example, it could be pharmacies, it could be uh, drug stores, uh, drug shops, it could be kiosks, it could be supermarkets, it could be uh, you know, health, health workers or health facilities, so a whole range of channels through which uh, the product or service is made available. Policies obviously refer to the rules and guidelines that govern uh, access to and provision of the product or service to the target population. So some examples here would be in, in a specific country or a context, uh, are pharmacies allowed to administer, administer injectables? So does the policy support that? Uh, or, or are drug shops allowed to stock and sell oral pills? Uh, can condoms be advertised? So these are all policies and regulations, or rules and guidelines that, that then impact uh, uh, the the choice uh, and and use choice access and use and and therefore it's another important element of the the core marketing mix. Next slide, please. Sure. So in addition to these four P's and policy, uh, there are other key elements uh, of, of social marketing, uh, and and uh, one of them is that it is client centric. Uh, Social marketing programs uh, are attuned to meeting the client's needs, their aspirations, and their preferences. And, and I'll explain what I mean by that. Uh, a need here could be, uh, for example, delaying the next pre pregnancy. An aspiration could be, uh, I want to be, or I see myself as, as a responsible person, or I see myself as a uh, ambitious and successful person. Or, or I see myself as uh, outgoing and enjoying life. So that's that's my aspiration. And then the preferences uh, could relate to uh, when, how, and from whom the target population prefers to access these these information products or services. Right. So uh, it, it's social marketing is client centric in the sense that it it really is attuned to. Uh, the population's needs, aspirations, and preferences. And, and obviously the entire population doesn't have the same need, aspiration, and preference. So uh, that's why we end up segmenting the population or you have different market segments and you have multiple products. Uh, two 
I think the key thing to remember is that social marketing, uh, the bottom line for social marketing is really behavior change. Uh, it's it's not about it's not just about increasing knowledge or changing attitudes. It's about increasing and sustaining use. Uh, so that is the bottom line, and that that's something that we need to keep central uh, in our minds when we're doing social marketing. Uh, I'd say social marketing in the right context and with right approaches, of course, uh, can be a bridge to developing commercial markets for family planning products. So social marketing programs obviously uh, help grow the market and, and when, the, when the market for a particular product or service grows, becomes larger, there are more users, uh, then, then the commercial sector finds it more attractive to enter that market because you know, there's greater uh, revenue and profitability potential. Uh, social, marketing, uh, social marketing also plays another important role in the, in the sense that it increases the acceptance of family planning uh, among the target population and also among the distribution channels, for example, the retail outlets. So uh, in that sense, it paves the way for the commercial market, sort of uh, laying the, uh, the, the groundwork uh, to then help commercial marketers then enter if, if they find it interesting and feasible. And I do want to say that governments play a critical role uh, uh, in, in social marketing. So I think Clancy mentioned this, governments can finance social marketing and can and do finance social marketing to, to sustain or continue social marketing. Uh, governments have an important role in making sure that uh, there are supportive policies and regulations. Uh, that's the relates to the policy P uh, so that you know, social marketing can expand access and use. And finally, governments have an important role uh, as sort of a stewardship function, coordinating the efforts of the public, the social marketing and the commercial sectors, uh, so that each of these actors uh, are well coordinated and serve the, the target audience there they intend to serve, so that there is uh, a minimum of overlap uh, and a maximum of synergies. Next slide, please. Okay, so what barriers can uh, social marketing help address? So uh, where the barrier to family planning uptake is low demand for contraception, uh, I'll start with that. Uh, the social marketing programs, uh, and I think again, Clancy mentioned this, they can increase demand uh, both by changing individual knowledge and attitudes, uh, individuals' knowledge and attitudes, uh, as well as by addressing social norms uh, through a combination of promotion and SBC campaigns. So social marketing programs, uh, and particularly so, so in the first stage of the S-curve, uh, but also in the second, have been effective in, in uh, increasing demand for or addressing this barrier of low demand for contraception. Uh, so uh, it can also address the barrier uh, where, where, where access to high quality and affordable contraceptives is a barrier. Uh, so in, in many countries, uh, social marketing programs, they distribute a range of low cost, high quality contraceptives. And they do that through a wide network of, of these distribution channels, right? Pharmacies, shops, and, and other service delivery points. And by leveraging this extensive private sector retail, uh, that we see in many countries. Uh, so social marketing programs are able to sort of quickly and rapidly uh, increase access. So that's, that's one of the key strengths of social marketing. And, and typically uh, social marketing programs may have uh, say multiple brands of a product. So uh, say oral pills as a product and a social marketing program may have two or three brands of pills so that it is able to meet the you know, the specific needs and aspirations and, and, and preferences of different segments of the population who want pills. Uh, so they may even have multiple brands. Another gap that uh, social marketing can address uh, is uh, when, when there are gaps in sort of public sector provision, uh, uh, either availability or choice in terms of the public sector provision. Uh, one, uh, Obviously, uh, it offers an alternative to clients uh, who say want to access the product during the hours that the public health facilities uh, is closed. So 
social marketing by working through the private sector offers an alternative. Uh, it also offers an alternative uh, when the public sector supplies are inconsistent and uh, you know, such as the, the case of progesterone leaf pills in, in Afghanistan. Uh, and importantly, social marketing programs have helped increase contraceptive choices that are available in a country. Uh, the standard days method comes to mind. I think in many countries, the standard days method is, is, is typically available through social marketing. Um, uh, social marketing of injectable contraceptives in India and hormonal uh, IUDs in Madagascar are, are two other specific examples. But the social marketing programs not only demonstrated first that, you know, uh, these these methods are acceptable to the population. They're being utilized. The use is growing uh, or uh, go, going up. But and and this demonstration then led to uh, their eventual inclusion into the public sector programs in these countries. So that's another great uh, barrier that uh, or challenge that the social marketing programs can access. So when when specific segments of a particular of a population um, uh, face barriers to access, then social marketing can be particularly helpful. Uh, for example, certain uh, population segments may choose to use uh, choose to obtain contraception from the private sector. Uh, uh, take youth, for example. Yeah, youth may prefer private sector because uh, because because of the because they tend to offer more anonymity uh, and and convenience. So in for for these uh, for uh, certain population segments, uh, social marketing, uh, particularly and more generally private sector provision, can uh, can help address those barriers. And I'd say, lastly, uh, when 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 you're finding that in the private sector the range of contraceptives available uh, is limited, it's not it's not the full range, it's not wide. Then social marketing can be a particularly good strategy. Uh, we see this more often these days in the case of uh, IUDs, implants, and injectable contraceptives. Uh, but that doesn't—it I mean, it also applies to to other methods. Uh, and sorry, could you go back to the previous slide, please? Uh, so uh, coming back to this wide range of uh, contraceptives. So we see that more often in certain kinds of methods, but obviously applicable to all. Uh, and in some countries, uh, what happens is that these, these methods are available only or mainly uh, through public uh, health facilities, meaning that people who prefer private sector sources would not have access to those method choices. Uh, and, and therefore, having social marketing introduce this to the private sector can help address that, that that challenge or gap or barrier, and and for example, you know, the Jiblal will talk about it uh, in, in the next presentation. But in Nepal, uh, this was the case for injectable contraceptives, and CRS introduced injectables through through a network of pharmacies that they call the Sangini network, so that so that people who prefer uh, the private sector can access injectables too. Uh, and next slide, please. I want to say this. Uh, so there's strong evidence uh, of impacts of uh, social marketing on voluntary adoption of family planning. Uh, I'm going to highlight four specific uh, buckets of them. Uh, so starting from the top left. So four notable systematic reviews have found uh, positive effects of social marketing on uh, knowledge. Uh, on uh, that it increases positive effect that, that meaning that it increases knowledge that it increases access and that it increases use uh, systematic reviews across uh, you know multiple uh, programs and, and contexts uh, the second bit of evidence that I really want to highlight is uh, that social marketing seems to serve uh, uh, particularly serve users of short uh, short acting contraceptives and and this really comes from DHS so data from the DHS uh, shows us that uh, uh, you know in, in many countries where social marketing uh, programs are there uh, more than 70 percent of oral pill users uh, rely on a social marketed brand and more than 60 percent of condom users rely on a social marketed brand uh, among all users of these methods in the country Social marketing, um, so moving 
now to the top right. There's clear evidence that it reaches priority populations effectively, uh, and, and talking particularly uh, in terms of the evidence, there's clear evidence particularly about uh, social marketing's effects on reaching rural populations and youth. And, and to the lower right, uh, there's evidence that uh, social marketing marketing contributes to building a healthy market. Uh, and, and for example, there's evidence that social marketing has sustained the increases in contraceptive use, even after the donor funding has ended. Uh, so there's, there's evidence to that from uh, many countries. So this sort of the, the main bodies of evidence, each of these, the multiple data points, uh, rigor, uh, rigorous studies, and then uh, sort of peer reviewed, so strong evidence to support uh, that that it can not just increase knowledge and access, but it can also increase use. Uh, does particularly well in short-acting contraceptives, effectively reaches priority populations, and helps build a healthy market. Next slide, please. And Ram, we're just about at time, so uh, I think this is your last slide. Is that right? Uh, I'll go through this quickly. Maybe I have uh, this Thank and you. one more. Uh, so. Uh, I won't go through the details of this. The social marketing brief uh, has this theory of change, which essentially brings together all of these points that I just talked about. Uh, so what are the barriers it can address? What is the high impact practice? Uh, you know, what happens? What are the benefits and impacts? Uh, so I found this a very nice summary and visual representation. So I wanted to highlight that. Uh, it's, it's a good way to put together everything in one place. And next slide, please. There's a lot more of rich detail in the in the brief, so I'd really encourage you to go through the brief. Uh, uh, and in that, you'll find tools and resources, you'll find implementation tips, you'll find priority research questions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, so I'd encourage you to go through that. Uh, and Great. with that, thank you. Ron, thanks so much. Uh, fantastic exposition of the uh, of the key facets of uh, the high impact practices social marketing brief. Key emphasis on policy as a fifth P, the stewardship and the and the key regulatory role, the role that the government has in social marketing, the importance of social marketing as a bridge to the uh, developing of the commercial market, and the key role that social marketing can play in increasing choice in contraceptive. Uh, options. Uh, and so with that, I'm um, great to be introducing uh, Jimbal Pokhral, uh, the Managing Director of the Nepal CRS Company. Uh, welcome, Jimbal. Really excited to hear your, uh, your views. Um, CRS, a pioneer uh, in social marketing in Nepal, as you can see over many decades, I think since 1978, and a really key player uh, in the private sector market uh, in Nepal. So over to you, Jiblal. Uh, really uh, looking forward to hearing your your thoughts in follow up to uh, to Clancy and uh, and Ram. Uh, thank you, Martin, and uh, thank you, Ram, for such a detailed presentation on the, on the principles of uh, social marketing and how the four P's are utilized in the sort of social marketing. And much of my uh, presentation that I will be giving today will. Hopefully, we'll be able to highlight these four principles, how they are actually used in the social marketing, the real examples, and how Nepal CRS company has utilized this to achieve uh, or be a pioneer in social marketing in Nepal. Uh, to start with, just to give you a brief uh, uh, background to the country that uh, I'm presenting on, um, Nepal is a small country situated between uh, China in the north and India in the south. The total population is about 29 million and it has three distinct ecological zones. And um, uh, at the bottom of the, I mean, the map, the blue section is the densely populated Tarai region or what we call the lowlands. Uh, and this is the um, area which is much more accessible and the area where, I mean, the main area for the economic activities. And the other two, the greenish and the reddish sections are the uh, hills and the mountains which are sparsely populated and present uh, themselves to be very challenging for the uh, making the contraceptives uh, accessible and available. 
uh, and most of the most of the population or uh, more than just over half of the population of the country resides in the lower lands in the blue band and on the uh, nepal has about 1190 gni per capita and in terms of the family planning uh, I, the modern contraceptive prevalence rate increased from around 3% in 1976 to right now it's about 43% in 2016. That was the uh, national uh, survey. Uh, private sector uh, share mainly the social marketing and social franchising networks increased from around 21% in 1996 to 30% 30, 30 in uh, 2016. Next, next. next slide, please. Nepal CRS company, what you call a social marketing organization in Nepal, it started was started in 1978 and transitioned and issues like as a not for com profit company in 1983. And it was during this time the um, this uh, CRS family planning and maternal child health project which. It was started in 1978. It was institutionalized as a company. And during this process, um, it was thought of making this uh, organization as a, a public-private uh, partnership. And we have a shareholders from uh, the Ministry of Health, the Ministry uh, and Family Wealth Division, social organization, professional bodies, and private sectors. And altogether, we have 12 shareholders. We are not for profit company. Uh, at present, even though during this period from 1978 to uh, now, we have experimented with many products and uh, variants of the products. And as of today, we have uh, 12 socially marketed products. And we utilize the uh, extensive net network of uh, uh, non-clinical network of pharmacies to sell our products. And we also conduct a range of social behavior change communication, uh, typically associated with the uh, social marketing. And as I said earlier, I mean, since 1978 till now, till date, Nepal has evolved in many ways. And Nepal CRS company also has evolved considering the needs of the country, the uh, policy of the government, the policy of the donor, and the context in which the market has developed. Next slide, please. Now, looking at the out of the four piece, I think that the first one was the product. Nepal CRS company have a wide range of the uh, products. And this slide shows the uh, uh, products that we have uh, at the moment. Uh, starting from the left-hand side, on the condom segments, we have four condoms. Uh, four types of different condoms uh, targeted at different population segments. And uh, I've, also, I've also given you the uh, prices per piece. This is how much uh, a condom would, a piece of, one piece of condom would cost you in Nepal if you buy from the social marketing. And uh, if you look at it, the top rows, top rows are the products which are highly subsidized. Then if you, when you keep moving down to panther and the panther strawberry flavor and the desired condoms, uh, cost to the consumer increases. And this has been done based on the uh, ability of the consumer, target consumers to pay. On combined oral contraceptives, we have um, two types, uh, two different variants. Sunol Gulaf is targeted towards lower income families. Uh, whereas the Nilakon White is targeted at higher income families. And, and, and the prices of these per cycle are reflective of those, of those strategies. We also have an emergency contraceptive, which is, uh, I mean, uh, targeted uh, as an emergency contraceptive. And, and we have injectables, again, heavily subsidized in terms of the uh, cost of the product to the cost of the product, uh, how much it costs us to uh, buy the product and how much the 
consumers have to pay to obtain that uh, product. And we also have uh, the, uh, the IUCD and JDL uh, in the long acting range. This, this is a portfolio of the social marketing family planning products that we have right now. Next one, please. And apart from the family planning products, uh, like it was mentioned earlier, that many social marketing organizations also sell other value-added products uh, uh, for other specific health outcomes. And we also have uh, the maternal child health, under maternal child health, the oral rehydration salts, and under SIV, STI prevention, we have the cure, uh, bottom of the uh, slide, and on, we also have products under menstrual hygiene management, which we recently launched in October 2021. Next slide, please. Now look at how the, uh, I mean, the multi-brand and uh, are segmented in terms of the uh, preference of the consumers, also how the, they are segmented in terms of the uh, customer profiles and the target uh, customers. And I've just taken a case of the two oral contraceptive pills here. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the Sunolo glass is priced at rupees 30, that's about 25 uh, cents uh, per cycle. Um, and uh, this is targeted to, towards uh, the lower income people and the recent, the 2016 uh, NDHS data supports that strategy and the data that we have from the uh, used data from the 2016 NDHS is the, that the Sunolo Gulaf has a higher market share in the rural than the urban areas. And use of the Sunolo, uh, Sunolo Gulaf is highest among the two lowest wealth quintiles. A perfect example of how the product was uh, targeted and how it has actually uh, been utilized. The next one on the same condom, uh, sorry, on the uh, uh, combined oral contraceptive pills, we have the other brand, Nilokan White, priced at 50 rupees, that's about 42 cents per cycle. And uh, this product has been uh, targeted towards the upper uh, wealth quintiles and the use also supports that this is being used by the upper wealth quintiles, upper two wealth quintiles, and the market share of this product is higher twice that of in rural areas. So this is how the product was strategized, how the uh, uh, social marketing uh, segments the market, segments the uh, consumers and the Price and the distribution strategies are adopted. Next slide. Jibla, we, um, we're going we're gonna to have to pause there because we, we have a, a wealth of questions uh, that are coming in. And so I, I wonder where, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that we're, we're, we're a bit out of time and we need to answer a few of those questions. So I'm, I'm very sorry to stop you. Um, Jiblal, is that okay? Um, oh, that's okay. I, I mean, I have, that's okay. I mean, I, and I do, I do, um, I do hope that we can, uh, I, I, we will, we will download the uh, presentation. Of course, it is available um, in the in the handouts here. But we, we do need to get to some of our our, our questions and answers. If that's um, Martin, that, Martin, can I just yeah. say a few words? Please, before please, that? please, Jibla, thank you. So the next, next few slides that uh, I had was how we utilize the distribution channel. What are the mm. different uh, distribution channels that we are are utilizing to get the products across and the slides they are showing is how the different promotional activities are uh, what are the different types of the promotional activities that CRS does and uh, next one please I'll just say a word each so that the uh, and, uh, Thanks, and this one this one the I mean you have come a long way uh, since the uh, 90, establishment in 1976 and our achievement is that about 58% uh, of the uh, people who use uh, OCPs use CRS OPCT, 
45% of the people who use condoms use CRS, social marketing condoms, and 25% of the uh, injectables user use the CRS injectables. And we have delivered a consist consistently increasing CYP in the country, looking at the, if you look at the graph, and we are delivering about 500,000 CYPs uh, as of today. And um, um, I think the next slide is, uh, I'll not go into the detail considering the time constraints. I'll just say what was the evolving con uh, context in case of Nepal and how CRS has responded. I hope the uh, readers will be able to understand that. If not, please do, uh, do send me questions and I, I'll be happy to reply. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Jivlal. And I really do appreciate uh, the, uh, the presentation and your swift um ability to to summarize there and uh we do have some time for, for for questions and answers now um if that's okay uh and so a quick question first up for for clancy um uh, clancy uh just to quickly um uh, give us an an update if you can this question from france sekula uh in terms of the uh the source for the s curve and and, and, and how you're talking about consolidating uh, uh, demand versus building demand. Thanks. We are going to go a few minutes over, colleagues. Are you there, Clancy? I am. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Yes, Sorry. please. Uh, apologies. So, um... Just trying to understand the second part of that question. So the activities to consolidate demand versus building demand. I I don't recall referring to consolidating demand, but I'll ref, a reference back to the question, the presentation to see. Um, but I think in general you could say that building demand is um, trying to to increase demand significantly. Consolidating demand might be a little bit further along where you have some demand, but you're trying to consolidate it. Um, but again, I'll, I'll try to reference back to the presentation. I'd be happy to be in touch by email if that would be helpful. Um, and then I've, included, I've included sources and references there. So feel free to take a look at that. Thanks, Clancy. Um, and, uh, and quickly on to then a question from, uh, from Renee um, uh, in terms of um, uh, how is, um, uh, how is uh, demand and, uh, and choice uh, um, uh, sort of secured for for um for OCPs, um, are we only talking about pre uh, WHO pre qualified in the social marketing uh, arena? And then um, and then uh, and I'm going to come to you, Jiblal, with this question, if that's okay. Um, how additional uh, new and additional products considered for social marketing? For example, you know, lower hormonal doses um, of uh, uh, for OCPs, as Rene puts in a question. Jiblal, can I come to you with this question? Sure. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I mean, much of what uh, how we introduce the product is what we think is the there is a demand in the uh, market, and our, our policies are also guided by the uh, policies of the Nepal government and uh, the I mean, uh, based on the policies of Nepal government, uh, we feel that the, if there is in order to address that need. If there is a requirement of the new product, then we go and explore the possibility of the, uh, importing the uh, new product. Uh, and as far as the, uh, if, you, if, if I understood correctly, if, if you're also asking me how the uh, qualities are maintained, then the, I think we, we follow the sort of like uh, uh, international guidelines on the uh, 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 contraceptives. We do, um, uh, procure the uh, contraceptives from uh, uh, WHO qualified uh, producers, and we do a lot of like uh, uh, pre and post treatment inspection. Does that answer your question? Thanks, uh, and Renee, we, we, do, we do hope you can follow up further uh, with, uh, with Jiblal uh, on that question. Um, we're just moving through. I know that we're four minutes over time, colleagues. Apologies for that. And Jibla, thank you very much uh, for that answer. Um, just, uh, uh, just a last question, I think, here, or two very quick fire questions, if we can. I'm going to come to you, Ram, 
Um, how do we ensure a good balance in dialogue between uh, those marketeers of RH, uh, RH supplies and uh, and a sort of uh, an understanding of the side effects and how that can affect uptake of uh, products? This is a question from Parajuli, I think, uh, in the Q&A. Can I come to you for this question, Ram? Are you there, Ram? Can you hear me, Ram? So, um, Rajan, we're going to follow up um, on an answer to that question with you. I'm sorry that we haven't been able to get uh, Ram back on the line. And uh, just to answer our colleague from PSI Lao, we do have uh, uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the slide deck available. Uh, and I see a whole set of other questions that have come in uh, that we will collect uh, and we will make sure answered. I see Aisha's question on DMPASC. Uh, on uh, another question from Nepal in terms of larks that I will make sure that uh, we put over to Diblal um, and uh, and also a question about social marketing in, in fragile settings that, uh, that Clancy mentioned at the beginning. So we will collect all those questions and make sure they're answered. And colleagues, I'm, 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 I'm greatly uh, uh, disappointed in many ways that we've run over time at six minutes. And uh, Diblal, my, my sincere apologies that we weren't over, able to get through uh, your full uh, presentation. Uh, we have it available um, in the uh, in the handout, and we do really uh, will follow up with all of these uh, further questions. Uh, so, with that, um, sincere thanks to to Jiblal, uh, to Ram, to Clancy, uh, to my colleague Ados May um, uh, within the uh, the IBP uh, network, and to all of the authors of the social marketing high impact practice. Please do visit the websites. Uh, please do download the brief. Please do uh, get out there and uh, and put it into action in the service of our broader uh, family planning goals. And with that, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we'll follow up and a very good day to you. Thank you.